linear approximation and error bound. In this session, I will talk about the error, the size of the error in the linear approximation. Let me, let's see. We know the linear approximation, we can use the tangent line, and we do have a difference. Yes, we remember delta F minus D, D, delta Y, actually, that's the, the actual difference between two values. That means this is, this is delta Y or delta F, and this is DY. Right? That means the difference between this blue line and the red line, yeah, it's that small um, error between the approximation because we approximating instead of taking this actual value, which is complicated and sometimes even not possible, we're using the, the tangent line. That's we're not looking at this blue value, we're looking at this red value. And it's still fine, but we have a small error, small difference. That means that difference is the error. And it's this uh, small vertical gap. And we do have an error bound theorem, how we can evaluate the size of this error, yeah? not having the actual value. Because if we will have actual value, we can simply subtract the red line segment minus the blue line segment, we will get this vertical gap. But we're not doing this. We do have a theorem, which will be proved later in probably in calculus two, in section 10.7. But let's see how we can estimate the size of the error. The size of the error is smaller or equal to, but smaller than one half quantity K times the difference, yes, the, the run, delta x squared. Yes, delta x, the entire difference, how far away we're going from the point A squared. Okay, now the quantity k. k is the maximum value of the second derivative on the interval where we're going away from A. That's mean from A to A plus delta x. Okay? And we second derivative, maybe we can, I can just make a small comment. I don't want to go really deep because we still need a couple of tools, but second derivative is quite helpful uh, number quantity because it's, uh, it will, yes, it will help us to establish this, this size of the error because it's a uh, second derivative measure how quickly the tangent line uh, is changing the direction. Yeah, that's mean if the second derivative is smaller, the graph is like flatter and the linear approximation is more accurate over the larger interval when we're going a little bit further from A. But as I said, I don't want to explain this later. We will have these tools. But at the moment, we I would like to focus on that theorem that you please remember. Yes? The size of the error is less than one half K, the maximum value of the second derivative, and times um, delta x squared, okay? And let's, yeah, I, you may read this, but we will discuss this later. And also we have another, like a reason for that formula, but it will be discussed later. Okay, that's me. Let's just solve one example with the error and then you can practice more. Okay, suppose that, Suppose that at t equals to 2, the position of a particle is s at 2 is 5 meters, and its velocity v at 2 is 4 meters per second. A, use an appropriate linearization, L of x, to estimate the position of a particle at t equals to 2.1. So we have to estimate through the linearization. Now, B, suppose that we know the particle acceleration satisfies this inequality. Acceleration is less than 20 meters per square uh, seconds for all times. Yeah, that means we may see like approximately acceleration is a second derivative. All, the maximum value almost is 20. All of the other values are less. Determine the maximum possible value of the error. In this approximation, we can see this is the actual value. This is the linearization. When we take the difference, we have this small gap, and we know how to estimate this error, the error bound theorem. Okay, linearization, perfect. S of two 
plus S prime of two, X minus two. We remember from the linearization session. And now we know the value actually S prime, this, the first derivative of the position function is the velocity. We also know that. And let's substitute. This value is five, velocity is four, and this is the linearization. I will keep that form because that form is good when we are uh, making actually use of this, when we applying linearization for approximation, because we will see nicely delta x, the difference. Okay, let's evaluate. Function, position function can be approximated by linearization. Let's substitute 2.1. 2.1 minus 2. Of course, delta x is 0.1 when we multiply. Okay, that means the value of the the position actually position at the time 2.1 is 5.4 meters okay that's part a okay now part b this is the formula yes the error error or difference the error is less than one half k times delta x squared we know what is delta x delta x is here 0.1 because we're going away 0.1 uh, unit, which is actually time from the from the time too. Okay, so now k is the maximum value of the second derivative because we know second derivative is helpful on that interval. And, and in this question, we do not have the formula norm. I mean, we may have a question that we will have a formula for the position function, then we can calculate the velocity, first derivative, and then we can calculate the second derivative, yes, and then substitute one of the value which will maximize the, the expression. But in this situation, we do not have formula. That's how we can find the maximum value of the second derivative. We know that the second derivative of the position function is the acceleration. And we do have a data. We have an information. Acceleration is less than 20. Then we may assume that this, yeah, the k will be 20. Yeah, I can assume that it's 20. Because all of the other values for all of the times, it's less than 20. That means k, it's good. Uh, and it's okay to use 20. And this is difference. I just typed the difference, but we know delta x is 0.1. That's mean 20 over 2 because 1 half was the part of the formula, which will be proved in calc 2. 10 times this, and I believe I didn't make the mistake, 0.1. That's mean this difference, the difference is less than 0.1. It is maybe a little bit too big error, yeah, because point 0.1 is quite a big number <laughs> comparing to this error. If this will be point zero 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 one, then we can say, but it's still, yes, linearization, it's still a good tool to approximate. Probably you know, the second derivative is a little bit too big because it will be, second derivative is telling us how fast the tangent line is changing, you know, the slope, the direction. Then if it's, if it's smaller, right, then it will be better approximation. Yeah, that's how we can learn at the moment. Okay, enjoy your error-bound theorem. Thank you.